Bam. Five and a half foot, 66 inches. So what the bloody hell am I doing here then? And more importantly, why am I already talking in feet and inches? Well, there's many reasons. Some personal, some professional, some just to see what happens. I'm here for two months and I have all sorts of things planned, not the least of which is a project that has been heavily requested for a very, very long time. Here's the mallet. Two years ago during the UK lockdown, I filmed the Garden series. I did this to both keep myself occupied and to be more relatable to you guys while also doing something charitable in the process. The setup, the weather, and most of all the pollen did everything they could to try and stop me. The scientists, if you can create a cure for hay fever as well as COVID, it would be spectacular. But we got it done. Well, here we are again, but with an apartment instead of a garden. However, this time I've got less tools at my disposal than what I had before. The temporary workbench here is even flimsier than what I was working with before. I've got no pre-prepared timber, whereas in the garden series I had some pre-prepared material from the workshop. And what's more, instead of making three small boxes, we're making an entire workbench. We've gone for a sawhorse slash Scandinavian style that's been designed around common board measurements. You'll find plans for it in the description below. Depot. So we've had a general mooch around and of course taken time to stop by the hardwood section to see what's there. What? What is this? Oh. Matt, enjoying red oak? Unheard of. Nice. Now, where would we find the common... Oh god, why is this guy approaching us? Is that okay? No, well, like what? We're gonna be making a thing, so we're just finding the number. Okay, no problem. Okay, thank you. What? <laughs> We've got about an hour or so until the store closes, which should be just enough time to dig through these piles and find some decent lumber before heading home. It's the next morning, and what better way to wake yourself up than edge jointing a bunch of seven foot boards? We're needing to do this on the floor because the pre-existing workbench is not substantial enough to support it, which means we're needing to get into all these contorted positions to run over the entire length. This is the antithesis of my how to plane correctly video, link in the top corner. Right, sorted. Time to get it all glued up. Fortunately, we had these parallel jaw clamps delivered earlier in the day, which is going to make this and any future processes so much easier. Nice, only a few days in and we're making pretty good progress. Next, we need to make some of the cross braces by gluing two two by fours together. And, uh, oh wait, what's that? There's a thing called workbench con down in Atlanta. Sh let's go. Okay, let's, let's take a look at the fishies instead. Let me just say now that on the whole, WorkbenchCon was a very good event. Lots of interesting talks, met plenty of people who I would not have met otherwise. I was just way too camera shy to film or be filmed while I was there. Anyway, that's enough fishies for today. Back to New York to continue working on this bench. Right? Nope. New Jersey next because I promised I'd help my girlfriend renovate her mum's kitchen. This is how it started and this is how far she'd got with repainting the cabinets and changing the worktop. I was just here to help clean up and tile the backsplash. Should be a pretty quick job. So... It's now two weeks later and we're finally done. We did find a little bit of time here and there to work on the workbench, such as laying out which components go where and even managing to chop out a socket or two. 
but it really wasn't much. I figured while we were down here, we may as well get the rest of the kitchen done, which may or may not have been somewhat irresponsible given the incomplete workbench. But on a positive note, I did find some time to sample the international cuisine of America. And by that, I mean Captain Crunch, Apple Jacks, and countless visits to Wawa. That looks very good. Oh, and I showed how not to play ski ball. Yeah, enough of that. Back to New York. So I'm now working on the legs of the workbench. The best and the worst thing about these common boards are the rounded edges. They're great for handling, but are an absolute pain in the ass to remove with a plane to create square edges. Fortunately, these parallel jaw clamps make it easy to hold the wood securely to the workbench without restricting access to the top. If you're interested in these clamps, I've put a link to them in the description. I'd highly recommend them. With the legs squared, thicknessed, and cut to length, I can begin laying out the joinery. These legs are cut at 15 degrees on either end and have a lap cut into them that locks into the top support, which will hopefully give it plenty of location when gluing and prevent racking over time. clamp this up, I'm going to make a bunch of 15 degree wedges that I'll temporarily attach to the legs with super glue. You'll also get a good look at the effort we put into grain selection with this bench. Just look at that book matched end grain. Ooh. So next, let's start the stretchers. I'm going to begin this by marking the length and the shoulders of the stretchers directly from the legs rather than following the plans. The reason for this is that blindly following plans throughout a project doesn't account for the discrepancies that compound over time. It's often best to reference measurements off the work in progress where you can, and it's fortunate we did because we found a few of the splays were slightly off and needed bespoke fitting stretchers as a result. They're not perfect, but they're together. So now I'm gonna begin working on the table supports while Sarah begins stripping the paint off this quick release vise. These table supports, of course, require more planing and squaring and will be nested using cross halving joints into the top of the sawhorses. One thing to note here is that we've designed this bench to be partially collapsible. Not fully, partially. Making it fully collapsible is completely unnecessary in this case, but being able to break it into slightly smaller components will make all the difference if it needs to move. Now the underframe is together, we need to attach it to the top. We'll do this by laying the legs onto the underside of the top and drilling through the pre-drilled holes to mark the locations of where the inserts need to be. Then we simply remove the legs, finish off the holes and screw in the inserts. We 
We then got the legs attached, flushed it all up and cut the top to length. Next we need to install the vise. It's a little bit more effort but we're going to install this in such a way that the back jaw is completely hidden and the tops of the jaws are set below the top of the workbench. The benefits to this are threefold. Firstly, it means there are wooden jaws on both the front and the back jaws which help protect the workpiece. It gives you a slightly deeper clamping capacity and it reduces the risk of hitting the tops of the jaws with saws and planes and anything else. But before getting it bolted down, we needed to remove a little bit of material from the cross brace and of course give the vise a new layer of paint. You're stuck again. <laughs> what do you think, Scott? Oh. Good. <laughs>